Well, good morning, good morning, everyone. I hope your day is going well so far. And um, today, before I begin, I want to read a couple of scriptures for us. And then um, I'll get into, like, talking with you guys. Okay? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just want to thank you for this day. Thank you for this moment, this space, and this time. Thank you, Lord, for your love that will not let us go. Thank you that our times are in your hands. Thank you, Father God, for all that you have done for us, Lord God, from the day of our birth until today. And as I get into this reading of the scriptures, Lord, and explaining, you know, from my own words, Father, you know, um, the interpretation or, or the meaning or what, you know, from my perspective, the word is saying, mighty God, I pray, God, that it will be a blessing to the hearers and the readers and the watching of this video, Father. In Jesus' name, I give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. All right, my friends, um, my first scripture I want to read is Romans 5, 1 to 5, and it reads, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into the grace, into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. And um, I read the scriptures for those of us who are going through situations. And I'm not only talking to Christians. And before I go any further, let me let everyone know I am not a minister. I am not a pastor. I am not an evangelist, I'm not a deacon, I'm not a deaconess, I'm, I'm not a Bible scholar, I'm just a woman who is a Christian, who um, just want to encourage people who are going through, through situations that they cannot understand, or a situation that seems so overwhelming, or a situation that seems like nobody cares. I just want to encourage you, not only, you know, for the life on this earth, but for the afterlife. That's the reason why sometimes I talk about Jesus coming. Because in this, if, if only in this life we have hope would have been of men, of people most miserable. There's a scripture that says that. And I, I, like I said, I, I know the scriptures, but I don't know. A lot of time I don't have in my memory where they're from. But the scriptures say that if only in this life we have hope, we would have been of people most miserable. So um, today I just want to encourage you. And I know it's better said than done because I've been there, done that, and sometimes still go through. You know, so I know, I know, you know, you'd be like, okay, she doesn't know what I'm going through. Believe me, I know. Been there, done that, and still going through. But God is good. God is so good. God is really good to me. So today I want to just encourage somebody. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your situation is because all of us situation differs. You know, some people have marital issues. Some people have financial issues. Some people have, have health issues. Some people have children issues, mother issues, father issues. A brother issues, you know, it's, it's, it's a job issues, all sort of issues. You know, but for some of us, it's compiled. Mine is compiled. It's just by the grace of God. The grace of God. The grace of God. <laughs> Only by the grace of God, I made it this far. Because it has been very overwhelming. And, you know, um... I talk about last week the woman that was in the library saying that um, she would have killed herself. And then I was in the doctor's office on Friday. And this man was there and I hear him saying to the nurse, I asked the doctor to give me something so I die. And she said, what? 
and he said it to her again and I sat there in the in the room I was in and I'm like oh my god you know I said I, I said a little prayer you know Lord have mercy because a lot of people are feeling like this a lot of people are feeling hopeless a lot of people are afraid of the future a lot of people don't know what's next a lot of people just want to give up because they think you know to me and I'm talking by experience to me they're hearing that voice of the, the, the wicked one from the pit of hell that's telling them that you don't have no use in this life anymore nobody wants you here anymore you're not gonna make it anymore you're no use anymore Ray 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 devil is a liar and the father of lies he comes only to steal to kill and to destroy so don't give him any part of your life when he comes says Satan I rebuke you this the blood of Jesus is against you you're a spirit from the pit of hell go back there you know and I'm, and I'm telling you that I'm telling you stuff that I, I've I've gone through because I, I felt so hopeless and even sometimes it still comes to me because you know I, I I know what it is like you know I see these people on the street with all these bags and my heart goes out to them really my heart goes out to them because you know what only because I have this car only because I have this car why I don't have those bags and I couldn't have the bags because you know I have a walking cha um, the challenge I, I, I you know a walking problem you know from from after that accident so you know I, I, I know I would have to maybe go home to Jamaica and just stay out there or you know let them put me in some home or something because I know so I pray for those people and I pray for people when I hear them so they want to kill themselves. I, I have a, 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 um, a sympathy in my heart for them. Because I know the struggles are real. I know when you're sick, there's no one there to help you. I know it. So I'm saying, been there, done that. So today, my friends, I just want to let you know that even though dying might seem like you are gone from this life where there is trouble and situations you can't handle, trust me, you don't know where you're going because it's no sweet by and by just like that when you die like that. You know, uh, it's, it's, it's not. And I'm just telling you up front. I, like I said, when I come here, I don't want to, I, I, I don't want anybody to think I'm judging them. I don't want anybody to think that I'm throwing words of them. I don't want anybody to think that I'm rude. I don't want anybody to think nothing bad of me. I, I just have to tell the truth. I can't water it down. I can't tell you any other way. I just have to tell you the truth. If you take your life, if you kill yourself, you have no more repentance in the grave. You're gone. Straight to hell. And I'm telling it like it is. I love y'all, but I have to just be straight up and just tell you. I'm not going to play games. Jesus is the only way out of this situation that we're in. And it's going to get worse. Saddle up. The worst is yet to come. This is just a brush of what's going to happen. The, the Jesus said in one scripture, men's heart will uh, faint because of fear. And that's why he said we must pray without ceasing because only prayer is going to keep us. Only the hope of Christ is going to keep us. Only the life we live on this earth is going to keep us. I'm just telling you all the truth. You know, um, some people are running away from it. They're going to other churches that preach this sweet message. You know, like, we're going to be on, 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 on this earth, you know, um, dancing and, you know, twerking or whatever they call it. This is just a momentous thing. 
yes it is just a momentous thing so today my friends as Romans 5 and 5 said in this life we will have tribulation Jesus said in in in, in John 4 but in, in uh, um, Romans 5, it said, Tribulation worketh patience. That means we just have to fight the good fight of faith. And patience, hope. And hope maketh not a shame. Because when we hope in God, hope that the money we need will come to us, hope that we'll get the house we desire, Hope that we'll get the husband and the wife that we want. Hope that our children will be saved or our children will be good. Hope that our loved ones can get better. Hope that our loved ones can come out of jail. Hope. We have to hold on to that hope. That hope that comes from the enemy, false hope. The hope that comes from God himself, God above. Because God loves us. He cares for us. You know, he really cares for us. And, and, and sometimes, especially, I have a, a spot in my heart for uh, the unbelievers or the people who are not Christians. Because if sometimes we, me, I'm going to talk about myself. Let me straighten up my sweater. Some, sometimes I do have challenge. Like, you know, I never say God is not real. Never, never, never. But I question, Father God, where do I stand with you? Where do I stand with you, Lord? I'm going through so much. You know, and I'm praying. Even, even, I think it was Thursday or Friday. I have to really sit down and say, you know, Jesus, let's have, let's, let's have a talk. <laughs> I said, I'm going by your words. You said, ask and it shall be given. Seek and he shall find. Knock on the door shall be open. And then you didn't even stop there. You said, for everyone that ask, receive. And to them that seek, find. And to them that knock, the door will be open. I said, what am I doing wrong? I did. And I do that more than one time. Well, we are humans. We are human beings. We're a human being. We're a spirit in a, in, in, in a human body. But right now, this is human. Yes. And we hurt. We get disappointed. We get angry. The Bible says it's okay to be angry, but sin not. We get angry. We cry. We bicker, we complain. But through it all, we have learned to trust in Jesus and we have learned to trust in God. Through it all, we have learned to depend upon His words. So, in saying that, I just hope I encourage someone today to fight the good fight of faith. This battle is not ours, it's the Lord. So we have to stay prayed up, cover ourselves and our children and our families under the blood of Jesus, that no weapon that is formed against us prosper, and every tongue that rises up against us in judgment. The Lord give us the privilege to say, I condemn that tongue. Yes, he did. Yep. So I love you all. And before I go, I have another scripture I want to read to you guys. Last Sunday, in my little short, in my short talk, or my little talk. Okay. I was saying that, you know, some people say they're going to be staying down here on earth. Well, I don't think so. And I tell you, I've been led by the Holy Spirit. I don't care what nobody want to think about me. I don't care at all. I've been led by the Holy Spirit of God within me. When I got off, I had such a conviction. Like, how could you say that? How could you say that? Go check the scripture. And I went and I looked it up a couple of days ago because even though I, I got that conviction, I didn't get a chance to just go and look. But I looked it up a couple of days ago. And I'm going to read for you guys Revelation 21 from verse 1 
down, I think, to verse 6 or 7. Okay? And it said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New, Jer new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of the heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. So I'm going to stop at the fifth verse. See? So last week when I said that, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm not no Bible scholar, so, you know, I can say some things out of place, but then I rely upon my Holy Spirit, because this is the second time, to come back and kind of condemn me that, uh, how could you say that? You know that's not right. You know you, you know you didn't say that, right? So, you know, I went back, I looked it up, and I said, today I'm coming to tell you all, yes, there will be a new heaven and a new earth. This earth will be gone. This, this, this troublesome place here won't be no, no more. But God is going to replenish the earth. You know, some people would be saying, that, how is that going to be done? Well, he built it in the first place. He created all this. Nobody can tell me that about no science who come from ape and no monkey and, uh, you know, this, that, 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 that. I don't believe in all that stuff and nobody cannot convince me of it because there is no truth to it. No thing couldn't make all this. God did. God did. Create a God who created man and then in, in Genesis 6, it repent his heart. He was sorry. He was sorry. He told Noah, it repents me that I create man. Because now their sin has come up to me as stinking my nostrils. Just quote the scripture all the time. I don't read nobody's book, I read the Bible. So God hates sin, but he loves the sinners. And that's the reason why I believe he hasn't come yet. He hasn't sent his son back onto this earth yet to come take over. Because Jesus is coming back. Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back for a prepared people. I'm not judging anybody. I have to just say it as it is. I, I can't water it down. I can't uh, let it look like it's, it's what it is. I just have to say it like it is. I'm looking for my riches. I'm looking for my business you have to flourish and prosper. I'm looking for everything that was taken from me to be returned. But if Jesus come before all that happened, it is what it is. We're out of here. But in the meantime, we have to live. We have to survive. We have to encourage each other. We have to love each other. We have to speak life into each other. We have to speak peace, because without peace, we won't see God. There's another scripture that said that. And Jesus himself said in the Beatitude, he said, Blessed are the peacemaker, for they shall be called the children of God. Okay? So anyway, my, ch my, my children, <laughs> anyway, my friends, I love you all. And I hope the words that I put out today we bless somebody in the name of Jesus. This is an intimidating place, actually. I must tell you, I think this is my second week here on YouTube. Oh boy, it is intimidating. But I just keep in my mind and my spirit and my heart and my head why I'm here. 
I'm not here to see what nobody else is doing. I'm I'm not here to be to be um like you know timid of anything. I'm just here to do what I am here to do. So I pray you all have a blessed day. You and your family. I pray you'll find peace, love, joy, happiness, and comfort. I pray that the Lord bless you and keep you, that the Lord make his face to shine upon us, all of us, and be gracious unto us, that the Lord will lift up his countenance upon us and give us his peace. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just want to thank you, O oh God, for your love, your mercy, your grace. I want to thank you, Father God, for the gift of life. I want to thank you for health and strength and power and love and a sound mind. I want to thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I want to thank you, Father God, for this big old universe, this earth, mighty God, that, that you see fit, Lord God, to put us human beings here, Lord. And even though, Father God, it, 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 it's painful for you, Lord, to watch and to see because you, you do away with a whole nation before with Noah. And God, it's just a shame, Lord, that the same things are coming back again, Father God. That is, it's been a stench in your nostrils, Lord. And because of that, Father God, you are coming back. But Lord, every time we see the rainbow in the sky, God, you created the rainbow. You did. And you said this is a covenant between people and you, God, that you will never destroy the earth again with water. So, Lord, we know you're a covenant-keeping God, and you keep your covenant to thousands of generations. So this morning, Father, I thank you. Thank you for my friends and loved ones across the world. Thank you for everyone that will see my video, whether they like it or not, Lord. At least something I said, Father God, will be resonated or, or will be um, saturated in their hearts and their mind and their spirit, Lord. My whole desire, mighty God, for doing this is to encourage someone, Lord, someone that no matter what they're going through, no matter what it looks like, Father, it doesn't change you from being God. You're God in a class and a category all by yourself. You are the God that created this world. You are the God that was and is and is to come, Father, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Save souls all across this world for your kingdom, Lord. Because it's not your will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So save souls, Lord. And, and Jesus said, I think it, I think it was in um, um, John, one, one of the scriptures in John. He said, how then can they come without you draw them, Lord? You got to draw them. You got to take, take, take from them that hardened heart and that hardened spirit, Lord. And, and that spirit that... That, that doesn't believe, Father. You have to take that from them and give them a, a heart of flesh, Lord, to, to be receptive to your words, to be receptive of the fact that Jesus is coming back. And this earth will be no more one of these days. And only those, oh God, those, Lord, who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior will be saved. Father, anyone is watching me and will feel that, you know, what is Gala talk about? What she a chat say? Father, let them just know, Lord, that this is not fables. This is not fairy tale, Lord. This is truth. I love everyone, Lord. You know I'm a people person. I love everyone. Just like I desire for myself and my children and my grandchildren and my families, Lord. I desire for all the families of the world because that's what we are. One big God family. So, Lord, I thank you today. Give your angels charge over all of us to go before, behind, above, beneath, and around us. God, cover us on every side. There shall no evil befall us, neither shall any plague come now a dwelling, mighty God. We have to believe that no matter what we're going through, your word, your words will never return unto you void. You say that. So, I thank you, Lord. Thank you. I'm grateful for this day, this moment, this space, this time. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that because of you, all things are possible to those of us that believe. 
Thank you for your life that you gave in exchange for us to be redeemed from, the, the, from death and hell. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our friend, our strength, our leader, our guide, our companion. That still small voice within that doesn't yell or shout. But Father God, if we just follow it, we will never, 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 never go wrong. So I'm grateful today, Lord. I'm grateful. I'm truly grateful. In Jesus' name, I give you thanks, praise, honor, and glory. You're worthy, God. You're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our praise, Lord. You're worthy of our praise, Lord. Amen. Amen and amen. All right, my friends, God bless you all. Until we meet again, shalom.